not only athletics, but also in uh, developing, developing them all around. So to share a last name only in pronunciation, not necessarily in spelling, um, is trying to Reese, give me your elevator, elevator speech. Okay. Um, hi, my name is China Reese. I am a six-time Colorado State champion. I hold a sophomore national record. I am a gold medalist um, from the World Youth Games in Donetsk, Ukraine. I am a all Big 12, all SEC honors academics. Um, I have attended the University of Texas, the University of Tennessee, and Texas Christian University. Um, but you know, everything isn't always what it seems. Um, at my time at the University of Tennessee, I actually ruptured my Achilles um, and ended up getting kicked off the track team. And really, that is the start of my NCAA athletics and my testimony as to why I am here today and the start of really who I am and what, what, what has created me. So, really. Yeah, we know you, but. Well, I'm Tate Janelle. I went to Western State, Colorado University. I played football four years. Uh, I've been I've been around. I've done a lot of different things. I'm a Lifetime Achievement Award recipient from Western State, Colorado University. Played on the number nine pass defense in the nation. Uh, I've done a lot of different things. I got a lot of different jobs around town. I have my own clothing line. I do vending machines. We have a carpet cleaning family, carpet cleaning and janitorial service. Uh, I coach football right now for Athletics and Beyond. I'm actually the head coach for the Athletics and Beyond, 707 Team Colorado. And that's what I'm doing right now. It seems like every time I talk to you, that becomes either eight or nine. But it's always something different every I time I talk exactly to you. I what the accolade was, it the eighth and ninth. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty good in pass defense. It, it, it's always a different number. It was eight last time. Then, then sometimes you get confused and say we were just really good. So um, Number one in the conference. Yeah, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Cool. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with that. Um, Savion Jackson to my left. Hey, my name is Savion Jackson. Um, I previously went to Overland. That's where I graduated from. After that, I went to like five different JUCOs. Uh, that was a struggle. You know, rough process. I was in Arizona, California, New Mexico, then back to Arizona, and then I went to Colorado Mesa. And uh, my background, I want to do psychology because I want to open up a psych firm for uh, black psychologists to um, basically in different avenues, whether it's marriage counseling, uh, tra traumatic experiences, anything to where, you know, I can help the homeless and all that. But yep, that's just a little bit of me. Jervé Robinson. Yeah, um, I'm Jervé Robinson. Um, you guys might know me from the last time we were doing this Athletics and Beyond show. But uh, I went to Overland with Savion. And then after that, I went to Otero. Um, went there for two years. And then I went to Washington State. Played there for two years. And now I'm home just training kids. Um, and also still training, getting ready to go overseas. Um, I, had, I had an offer to go to a team in Germany week or two ago, but uh, our world that we're living in right now is crazy, so uh, I had to go through some things, kind of set back for a little bit, but um, that's what I'm doing for right now. So, yeah. um, and you all should know that we consider all of our panelists here uh, members of the Athletics and Beyond family, and we're all connected one way or the other. Uh, I am uh, Kyle Reese, and I'm going to be hosting slash moderating the conversation today, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a few gems off of these young people and uh, some information that can help people that are in uh, spaces that they were in not too long ago. So um, I'm just going to paint a picture and I'll, I'll kind of circle around and, and see what you all have to contribute to it. Um, the last buzzer sounds, the last race is run, the clock strikes zero, and you as a student athlete are thinking what in your head tells you. How am I going to pay for this next semester of college? Why? Why is that? Was it a because like, you still had school to go, right? Yes, yeah, so I still have one more year remaining. I have my fifth and final year. I have to do my victory lap. I have to get some final credits just to graduate and everything. I was on scholarship for all four years before that, and it was really the first time that I was dependent on myself to pay for my own college tuition. But help me understand why you are in the the position of where you would have to pay for that or find resources to pay for that. Is that a division one, two, 
difference? Is that a, um, I, I went beyond my eligibility difference? Help me understand why you're in that position. So, uh, financial, I mean, I still got financial aid aspects and everything. Uh, they just, the, what your scholarship is up and you're no longer on a football team. They just don't pay for your college anymore. So at that point, I was just like, I gotta find a will, gotta find a way. Fortunately enough, I got a lot of heart. I ended up working three jobs. I was doing some landscaping. I worked at Family Dollar and I was bartending at the same time. That's just Golly. what I had to do. <laughs> landscaping, <laughs> bartending, and then working at Family yeah, Dollar. Yeah, all three. Golly. Ten jobs. <laughs> My nephew was actually living with me at the time. Um, now, now this, is, this is just to finish, mm -hmm. to get the degree. Yeah, this just to finish to get my degree. My nephew was living with me, got arrested, so he passed away uh, last year. Um, I was his legal guardian for that, that full year too, so I was over here trying to pay the bills, trying to go to school, trying to be a peer mentor, trying to lead a little bit, trying to do all of everything that I could in my power to kind of just keep going and everything, but yeah, I was doing a lot. What, what China, what's, what's your first thought when you cross that line for the last time? I'm gonna have to pull the mic to you. Yeah, there right. uh, What's next? <laughs> really, um, I'm scared. I'm 21 with two degrees. I have no clue what to do. Um, I'm track is my life. Track has been my life for what the past 15 years. All I knew was track and athletics, and you know, go to school, go to school, do good in school, and excel in track. That's all. That's all I was taught. Um, that's all I knew, and then I'm coming out of college athletics, D1 athletics, and I'm not signed. I'm not a pro athlete, and all the people I grew up with, making teams with, competing with, they're already on the next level at their sport, and then I'm finishing school, and I don't have a job, or I'm not at the next level in my sport, and so now I have to move back to Denver, and I have to go back home, and I have to find a different kind of hustle to just even continue to do what I want to do. So that was, Scary. <laughs> um, now, track is a little different because when you talk about the next level for uh, you know a lot of the major four mm -hmm. sports, it's obvious, right? It goes yeah. to the NHL, NBA, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But track is a little different. What does the next level look like from a collegiate standpoint? What What is the next step that you know if, if every if it was a perfect world you would go to? Um, being signed by a shoe company. So that's being able to do that. Being signed by a shoe company, and then having an agent really that's what it is to be able to get in the big meets like the diamond league meets so right now for me to be able to even do that get considered i have to jump 23 feet and so right now like i'm i'm on the cusp of that i'm like 22 feet so i'm like that's is the next level but me brushing my achilles that set me back and then doing all of that with tennessee that set me all the way back but i'm like i know the kind of athlete i am the hustle i have the drive i have that's why i'm like i don't want to hang up my spikes yet but it's hard, it, it's, a, it's a different kind of hustle when you don't have, you're not getting paid for it. You're not, I don't have the facilities or I don't have a trainer, or I don't have anything that all the other pro athletes have. So it's, that's it, but it's, 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 it's the shoe contract. That's what it is to track. That's how you get your money. That's how you get paid and that's how you're able to start traveling and getting to the big meets and go overseas and really get recognized and get um, paid and all of that. That's how it works in track. And, and that's what you're told from the very beginning, right? Since you're mm -hmm. from six, seven, eight years old, and this is the path. Yeah, and that's really all you know until then you get to college and then it's a different world. And then yeah. you have to start figuring it out, really. And that was when I started figuring it out. It's, it's way more to this than just those two things. Yeah. Say beyond your back. I would say basically that, you know, life is more than sports. Mm -hmm. To me growing up, like football was everything. My mom, like, you know, I know, for example, one year I didn't want to play no more. My mom said I had to finish what I started. So, like, that last, like you said, that last go, I was confused. I really didn't know, you know, what I wanted to do or what I could do. Like, I want to do psychology. You basically have to have your PhD to, you know, actually, you know, get paid and actually do counseling. So I had to, you know, have a long talk with myself. Plus, I want to take care of my family, you know what I'm saying? So I had to have a, a long talk with myself and be like, you know, what can I do? Do I have to come back and Denver to work? Or can I go back to school? What can I do to help my family? And what can I do to help myself? You know, uh, coming here, athletics and beyond, Narcy gave me a chance to, you know, be within the community and help out. That's all, you know, I'm about helping the homeless, helping, you know, the needy, anybody who needs help. That's what I'm here for, you know what I'm saying? 
uh, for example, the black man's reading level is at a fourth grade reading level. So what I wanted to do was uh, build a library to come in here. Young men and women could come in here and read and study. So you know their developmental process is like that's big time. That's big time. Uh, for me, that final buzz is still kind of going off like every day for me. Like I'm still pretty much chasing my dream. Um, mm -hmm. For me, that buzzer went off like when COVID started. So. I didn't know what was next. Um, the world was pretty much shut down. So basketball was like, what's basketball right now? You know, it was kind of not important. So I went through a period of where I had to really find myself se separate from basketball. You know, my identity was attached to basketball for so long. And then when basketball was took from me, I had to find who Gervais was separate from basketball. So now I'm, I'm in this space where I had an agent when I, when I graduated. I was with him for a whole year, and he didn't find me a job. Blamed it on COVID the whole year, you know, setbacks, there's less job, this, that, and the other. And then this past year, I get with an agent, he's like, man, that's that's not true. Like, COVID's taking jobs away, but people are still finding jobs. Like, he found me uh, a job in like a week. So it's like, it's just about who you know. Um, and I really just, I don't know, I kind of just had to do some self-discovery and see if I really, if I really wanted it. And, I think me being around the community, training, um, seeing seeing the sport from a different aspect, it showed me how much I really loved it and how much I don't want to give up yet. So I know this game will be around for me in so many different ways for the rest of my life. So yeah, it's bigger. It's bigger than basketball, but basketball has shown me so much of life in so many different ways. So yeah. I, I think everybody and myself included to some degree whatever game it is, is usually done with you before you're done with it, all right? Either the phone doesn't ring or something, or the pen doesn't, the, the, the contract doesn't come. There's something that you're waiting on that, that never arrives or you're wait, or still waiting on to arrive. So um, Gervais and China, since you, you guys are in that moment, right? You're, you're, it, you're waiting on it to arrive. What does, what do you do to sustain in that time, right? How do you stay mentally healthy, right? Obviously we know what you do to stay physically healthy, but what are the things that you're doing for yourself to um, stay afloat in those moments? It doesn't, it doesn't really get easier, you know? It gets, as you, as you dive into it more, you know, the mental aspect, you learn more, you learn how hard it is to sustain the grind, to sustain the love. You know, we're not we're not necessarily getting the results back. You you really have to love it. You know, that's 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 what I've learned, um, and that's the way that I've been able to sustain and keep going is because it's really a part of me, um, and it's it's helped me do so much in life, really. And so it's kind of hard to just give that up. You know. Um, yeah, I would literally everything Jermaine just said is everything that you said. When we're in the position that we're in it gives you a different kind of love. Like it, you have to fall in love, you have to fall in love with it a different kind of way, doing what we're doing because we're not getting anything out of it. We, we literally, we have to fall in love with the progress, the process of it every single day because that's all we have. That's all we, that's literally all we have. We have ourselves and we have the people that believe in us. We have our village. Um, and we just have our mentality, and that's the biggest thing that I've learned as well. Even when I went through everything that I went through in Tennessee, that's really what built me up and that I had to realize. We, when Gervais was talking about his um, self-discovery, that's really when I had my whole self-discovery moment and had to get my mind right and things like that. But I read a lot of books too, and I'm really big on mental health and things like that and making sure your mind is strong. And that's, that's my biggest thing is always making sure that my mind is where my body is. It has to always be equal. Um, but yeah, the love for the love of the game, the love of the track, everything like it's it's a different it's a different kind of love. Like in every single day, like I I have to show up for myself. Like and if I don't do that, then I know like okay, I have to be done with it. Like if I'm not out here giving it my all every single day, then I'm just I just have to be done. Like and I tell myself that because I'm not out here doing this for anybody but myself. Like, I don't have any reason to be doing it. If I want to continue to run track or I want to go and compete at a track meet or 
give something to myself, then I could go do it, but I don't have to. Like, that's literally what it comes down to. I don't have to if I don't want to. Because you could literally stop now yeah. and still, there are 